Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all of you for, for being here. Um, I'm Bettina. I'm responsible for the communication for Flixbus. And uh, yeah, welcome also to uh, everybody that is uh, participating in our live stream all over the world. Um, I just give me a second to make sure that everybody get, knows the drill. Um, you, have, you can type in all your questions during the press conference and then we are answering it during the Q&As. Um, just, I want to stress for us as a company, this is a big milestone. Um, we are here in Hollywood. I can see the sign from here. Um, and uh, this is a big step for us uh, that we are launching in the US. Um, now let me introduce you to um, Andre Schwemlein, our founder and um, CEO from Flix Mobility and Pierre Godin, our managing director for um, Flixbus US. Um, yeah, enjoy. Thank you. Thanks again. And, and as Bettina says, this is a very special moment for us. Um, the history of Flixbus is not that long. We are only about five years old. So we're about a little more than five years on the street. We started um, in 2013. The idea is a little older and um, in the first days, we had, it was very simple. We had essentially, we were three guys um, and with a very simple idea. Um, and it sounds simple at the, at the beginning. Um, and we were driven by the idea of being entrepreneurs. So if you look at these guys, it's Jochen and, and Daniel, my co-founders with me. And we were sure we wanted to create something that has an impact on the world. We were doing consulting back then and I liked the consulting job, but we didn't feel that we were having an impression on the world. And this is what we wanted to do, and we saw entrepreneurship as the way to do it. And then we stumbled over the idea that the market in Germany got deregulated. So Germany never had a history of long distance buses uh, other than the US. And we thought that's a great moment in time to start a business um, which transports people and which moves people in a very, very um, true way. And this is an idea which we followed for two years until we got it started. And looking back in the early days, we were sitting in a small office with our idea, with our vision. Our first investment was a printer and we did two weeks of calculation of Excel cases if a printer is a good investment. So that shows you the philosophy of this company um, is a very detailed, very data-driven company. And we kept this way. Um, we, in this small room, um, we weren't a fully digital company yet we are a technology company now, um, but back then we were driven by the idea, by the vision of making mobility accessible for millions of people in a way which is environmentally friendly, it's cool, it's technology driven, and it's affordable. And all the things we found in the buses, and for us it's a very special thing because it's a, a truly, a, truly a business which has impact on people. And if I look today, and there are a lot of cool businesses and e-commerce and, and whatever and social networks. But what I like so much about our business, it's, it's really moving people in the best way. And it changes your life if you can keep long distance relationships, if you see other cities, other countries, if you come around, see your family, see your friends. This is really changing your life. And this is what we like so much about our business. And looking a little bit back on the early days, the bus you see there, you, you realize two things. One is it's a blue bus, so we changed our color because, I mean, green is a very strong message towards our environmental friendly uh, footprint. But the ones who are um, good in buses or in, uh, pow uh, in uh, computers will see that this is a Photoshop bus and it's not even a long distance bus. Um, the point is at the beginning we had to kind of fake fake it until we make it and it for us it's great that I'm here standing now in the US only five and a half years after this Photoshop picture with a real bus and a real business and a real chance to come back to the, to the origins of long distance buses because when we were looking at the market in Europe buses have never been a, a good mode of transportation have never been relevant not a lot of people traveling by buses and we always look to the US the, the heart of uh, bus transportation, the iconic um, transportation over here um, have for a long time been buses. And we could win 
a lot of people who pursued this vision with us. Meanwhile, we are more than 1,000 people just at Flix. So we are 1,200 people. And we cover, um, at the moment, 27 countries. And in two weeks, it's going to be 28. Um, we have, and this is something where we are very proud of. Um, we have, besides the 1,200 employees we got as a team doing all the technology, the marketing, the brand, um, all the customer service and so on. We have created more than, more than 7,000 jobs for drivers across Europe. And this is something that we are very proud of. This is a real business. And this is a real business opportunity which we do together with our partners. Um, we have on the street, meanwhile, 1,700 buses. Um, that's one of the largest fleets um, in the world out there. And we cover more than 1,600 cities um, across Europe. Um, essentially, you can travel um, from the Ukraine until Portugal, uh, to Portugal. And for us, it's a huge step to expand now to the US and make this not available only for uh, more than 100 million passengers so far in the last five years, but hopefully to another 100 million also here in the US. And our vision is, and I already talked a little bit about this, we're going to provide smart mobility. We want to have a great value for money offer, um, a very convenient booking. We want to have a green um, mobility which we offer. We have a brand new buses. It's a, an amazing greenhouse gas balance. So at the, at the moment, you can easily say if you travel by the bus, um, that's the most environmentally way to travel at all. Um, better than buses, by far better than your car or, or um, also, of course, planes. And we want to make this available for everyone. This is nothing for a niche or for some people or for a part of the population. This is for everyone. This should be the young, the old, the rich, the poor, anyone, any nationality. It doesn't matter. This is a, a mode of transportation which has to be good enough, attractive enough that everyone can travel. And we want to have a great experience doing that. This, and this is very important for us. Looking a couple of years back, the image of the buses have not been good at Euro, in Europe. If you went to a university and asked people, would you travel by the bus, not 10% would raise their hand. If I go today to a university, and it doesn't matter if it's in Italy, in Poland, in Spain, in Germany, it doesn't matter. If I go there, 100% of the students have traveled with Flixbus and 100% did it because they wanted to do it, not because they had no other option. And this is what we want to have in the US. We want to have an, an image where it's a great experience, and this is achievable only if we have partners who provide um, such an amazing um, experience on the ride. And that comes to what is Flixbus about? What do we do differently? We don't own a single bus. Why is that? Because we believe there are two things to make this um, exactly according to our vision. One is the customer side in terms of I have to be a consistent brand. I have to attract customers. I have to do all the technology, all the data. And the other part is I have to deliver a great experience during the ride. And we thought very hard about how can we achieve this. And it was very obvious for us that if we do buses and if we do transportation, we won't be the best people in the world to do this. And we want to have the best people doing that. And therefore, we decided that we're going to join with hundreds of bus partners um, to provide this service. And this is the idea we had from the day one, and it will, will not change, and this is exactly how we do it in the US. So we are a technology company first. We do data, we develop our platform, and we um, ensure that this bus is full of people who like traveling with Flixbus, and we have partners who um, ensure that this is a great experience for these uh, people. And together, it's innovating the future of mobility, and this is really how I um, strongly believe what's happening. We started with buses, that's very obvious. Meanwhile, we do trains in Germany, um, and this is the reason why is essentially what we offer people is an opportunity to travel. No one comes to us because he says, I want to take a bus. People come to us because they say, I'm in LA, I got a weekend off, I want to go to Vegas. And that's the reason why they should come to us. And we offer the best way to get there. And this is our ambition um, all across the offers we do. And if we 
look at this also from a technology angle and, and the Google Assistant and we were on the Google I.O. conference mentioned as one of the prime examples. Um, we try to push this further also from a technology perspective because we don't have to run the assets so we can do the best experience around that and the best technology. This is also setting new standards. And coming back a little bit to the image we had, um, if you look at today, you have a consistent design specifications, it's brand new buses, um, and this is truly, if you, if you go through it, the most um, people who have not been in a bus for quite a while typically react to being a Flixbus, oh, that's a nice bus, I didn't know buses were so nice. And this is exactly what I want people to, to feel. Um, it's a very sustainable um, product which we have on the street with a lot of leg room, free Wi-Fi, you have GPS tracking, you have power outlets, so we want to make this the best ride you can imagine, and we will keep uh, innovating around that um, because this is our ambition to deliver a superior customer experience. Um, and this should change the image of the bus and the industry per se. And with this technology platform which we build, and we have hundreds of engineers and most people um, in competition or also in the industry, at the beginning, didn't understand what we, 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 which we were, what we were doing. <laughs> but we were developing a lot of technology. We we're very much focused on data. And I sometimes say we have more developers than our competitors have employees in the headquarter. And this shows the ambition Flixbus has to build a technology platform. Because this is the base for a brand which we create, which reshapes the image of the industry. And if you... and. I've been now in 27 countries with our buses, and this is what I can say. No image campaign of bus associations and so on will change the image. The only thing that changes the image of an industry and of a mode of transportation is if you have a great experience, if you try it out, and that's why we want millions of people to try it out, how we interact with them, how we deliver a great quality, how we also think about the customer access to give them stops directly, close to where they live, um, because we, we come from the data we see, we want to be close to the customer. Um, and this means the perfect offer is not only, <laughs> that's very LA. Um, the perfect offer, many people think of the physical bus. And if I think about the perfect offer for the customer, the bus is an essential part, but it's a lot of more than that. It's a lot of things around it. And this special approach we have changed the image of the industry across a lot of countries. And you see the, the European map there. Um, dark green is where we have national networks. Uh, light green is where we currently have no national networks. And I see we should uh, paint Poland uh, dark mm. green. Um, so where it's allowed and where there are legal um, ways to do it, we run a national network and we are the number one carrier in these countries and we are the only and the largest um, European brand um, in long distance buses and this is something that we are very proud of. And today we are looking to one of our big visions all over the um, last years. We are coming to the US and for us that's a very, very special moment um, and this is the largest step. And I mean, you all know that not too many European startups come from Europe to the US. And um, this is for us very special because um, it's a special country and a special market. And we want to bring a lot of innovation to here. And we want to do it very locally. And this is going to be our second home. And so I hand over to the guy running our second home. And this is Pierre. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Anne. When I, I joined Flixbus a couple of years back, I was in France. It was kind of the same story. They were like, yeah, just go and launch the country. And if you would have told me at the time that three years later, almost day to day after launching the first two coaches in on Paris, Clermont-Ferrand, I would be in LA discussing this amazing network I'm going to present you in a couple of minutes. I would not have believed it. And I, I still find it hard to fathom that we've gone that far in so little time. Um, I moved to the U.S. about a year ago, and I had three priorities first, because we, we were not sure we would launch. And I was very motivated, but we still had to look at the market. And basically, for, I did three things 
during the first six months. First, I traveled thousands of miles, probably close to tens of thousands of miles with all the means of transportation possible on all, in all the country. Then I looked at a lot of data and spoke with hundreds of people, passengers, we did focus groups, spoke to bus companies, spoke to all the people in the industry. And third, and this was probably where I failed the most, I had to learn English. <laughs> So after doing this small due, uh, due diligence, I, we ca I came back to Germany and the first thing I remember saying to André at the time was, André, I don't even know why you bothered uh, to start Flixbus in Germany. We should have gone to LA straight away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should have gone to the West Coast straight away because this is going to be our biggest market ever. This is going to be our biggest success. There is no place where we, where we will find our customers so quick. And there are a couple of really very strong trends that make LA and the West Coast specifically and the US as a whole a very interesting market for us. The first of all is quite the obvious, and I think that the fact that we have tens of people watching this uh, video conference from L based in LA and that no one bothered to drive here is that um, people don't want to drive anymore. No one wants to drive anymore. It's, it's become something that's non-productive. It's become something that's, that feels dangerous, that feels dirty. You are putting your hands on something that doesn't feel safe anymore for most people. And the other reason we don't want to drive is that we have better things to do. Basically, spend more time on social, network, social networks and consume things and stay connected with, our, with the people we, we like and follow. So this... Uh, it is a very good setting for autonomous driving, but the next best thing, the next best thing is, the, is bus for long haul. And this is why we believe there is a huge demand. People don't want to drive anymore. They can't be bothered. They just want to relax in the bus. They want to flex bus and chill. They want to have a good time, speak to the people they love, walk. And the fact that there is a lot of traffic is actually a great thing for us because you, it's much better to be in traffic in a bus than in a car. So this made LA specifically the best home for Flixbus in the US and the best home for what I, will, I think will be our second global headquarters after Munich. Uh, we, are, we are going places in North America and our home is LA. Um, Flixbus will be the LA local carrier. We are made in LA. Most of those buses will be driving out of LA. Most of those drivers will be based in LA. We are made by LA. We have a local team, as you can see. We have uh, local buses. It's really, we really t want to fit in this local culture. And we are the, today, we are LA's first uh, uh, new travel brand. So I'm just gonna go a little bit more into the network. As you can see, we have, it's mostly, going east, we have one huge axis where there's a lot of demand is uh, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. And this is the very classic uh, weekend uh, trip, but also weekly there are a lot of, a throw of, of connections between those two cities. And then we are basically building up around that key axis to go to as far as Tucson. And then we have Tucson LA, which, is, which actually has a lot of demand. There's very, very little competitive offer on that route. And we do it both in the south, so slightly longer route over Yuma, Calexico, San Diego, and some uh, also you have uh, El Centro and uh, El Cajon in the middle. And then we also have a northern route which will go over Palm Springs and, and Phoenix. Uh, and then of course the other big axis will be Tucson and Phoenix to, um, to Las Vegas. You can see all our stops here. It's more than 20 cities we will be connecting on day one. This is the biggest launch we've ever done. Most countries, usually we launch with two, four, six buses. We've never, now we are very close to 20 coaches on day one, we've never done this. And we are very soon are going to add even more coaches. So this is just the first phase. I can't tell too much about the next steps, but it's gonna be very big. I just want to zoom in a little bit on this map you just saw, because our, it's not just cities we are, we are connecting, it's communities. And if you have only one stop in a city like LA with 18 million people, it's not gonna work. So we, in every city where we stop, we have more stops than any other player. And for instance, in LA, when uh, close to here, we have a stop in UCLA. So you can go directly from UCLA, from your campus, after class, bam, you get in the bus, go to Vegas, have a night, uh, go and watch a college game or have a nice uh, night out with your friends. This is uh, really th what will make Flixbus such a reflex for people in 
the LA area and in other cities when they will travel. It's that there, was, there will always be a stop close by and there will always be a departure soon and there will always be space for you. It, so the day you become so ubiquitous, this day it becomes something else. It's not just bus anymore, it's pure mobility. And if on top of that you add amazing service and we have our partners to thank for that, you add a great in onboard entertainment and tech experience. You might be able to watch movies that will be ba stored on the bus, in the bus, and um, a very nice bus experience. It basically becomes something else than bus. It's a new mode of transportation. And what we hear from many people when we discuss our services is they say, guys, you are like Starbucks for mobility. You are all over the place. You have a very strong brand. You are extremely present everywhere, like we can't miss you. And, and also, and that's the most interesting thing, is that you come up with things that we want that we didn't know that we want. So with Flixbus, you're going to take those trips that you didn't know you would take. I, I want to say a, a word about our partners. Some of them are here today. First, to thank them. Uh, Flixbus is a very strong brand, but behind it, it's something that's even stronger. It's a very strong bond of trust and uh, shared vision between a group of like-minded entrepreneurs that got together to take the, to take the market. It's, uh, it's really, and the closest I, I can think of is a family of businesses as a way to explain it. We have currently eight uh, partners in the US. Um, almost half of them are based in LA and in the greater LA area. We will have an early launch 17 coaches uh, driving and we are looking forward to more than double that number in the following weeks. And um, all those companies, they have a very strong local experience and they are coming together to, to go after the bid market. And again, thank you very much. We're going to make it uh, work for you. You're going to see it's going to be a very nice adventure. Uh, it's also at the partners' companies that most jobs are created. And um, this is always something that we really push in France because everyone is excited about job creation, but in California there, seems, there, there seem to be more than enough jobs for everyone, but still it's something that we are happy about. We are strengthening communities. They will be just at launch. It's uh, probably more than 100 jobs will be created. That's drivers only. Then you have management jobs, other companies, and then of course we have our amazing uh, local Flixbus team, which is today close to 20 people in the, in the head office. So uh, d down the line, huge job growth. Um, just a quick word about the experience. I think you, you see the bus and it's most of it, but you have a complimentary Wi-Fi access and this is something that we've come to see as like, how can we be somewhere without a Wi-Fi? But it's quite hard to do on a bus that's moving between two cities and we are, get, we are getting really good at it. We have free onboard entertainment. We're gonna have some amazing announcements some great brands that we are going to be the first to have content that no one else ha has today are going to be on those buses. We're going to have, uh, of course, we already have the best app. And uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do, because it's, you can go and see the whole network. And then uh, you will be able to follow your bus directly. So like when you order a ride share car, you will see your bus coming in. So no more stress about being late, no more stress about where is my bus. I mean, you can't miss the bus, but now you can also, also you can't miss it online. It's, uh, we are not going after the bus market. We are going after something that's much bigger. Um, we are going after the car market. We want to become something that's a natural option when you travel to uh, another city. We want you to just step in your Flixbus, like to step in your car, you don't even think of it anymore. Moreover, we want people to expand their knowledge. Uh, Andre told it really well. The, I, we, we all believe, and this is why we sound maybe so passionate, is that we all believe that traveling is the only thing that where you actually spend money, even if it's not a lot of money when it's with Flixbus, but you spend money, but it still makes you richer. And when you think, you look back, you, you remember all your travels. And uh, we also, if we can all take a short moment and try to think about the trips that we did not take. And this is what Flixbus is about. This is what Flixbus is about for millions of people. It's about the trips we did not take, about the, 
this moment when you were 16 and you wanted to go and meet your grandmother and you couldn't go because it's, it was too expensive, or this girl you had met at summer camp, or this group of friends that was going somewhere and you wanted to join them. And Flixbus is about telling people it's very easy to book it, it's very cheap to buy it, and it's very comfortable and convenient to travel it. So just do it, just do this trip. You have no more excuses. Uh, we take a lot of things for granted today. We have everywhere, Wi-Fi, power, water, and it's cool. But a trip is yet not uh, something that we take for granted. Traveling is not something that's natural, where you can just go somewhere. And for many people, progress is about always going faster and uh, building uh, hyperloops and things like that. We believe that progress is about saying that more than a third of people in America today never travel. Tomorrow, the 31st of May, when we launch on those, at least in those cities, they will have a, an option to travel. They have no more excuses uh, not to take the road. Thanks a lot. So thank you. First of all, as mentioned before, we are now starting our Q&A session. So all the viewers, and we've got a lot of them, uh, can just type in their questions. Um, my colleague is reading it out, and Andre and Pierre are going to answer them. Yeah. Hi, Terry Gardner, freelancer for LA Times. Um, I have lots of questions. However, <laughs> you mentioned, um, you know, no excuse not to go see the girl you met at camp or the boy you met at camp, yeah, or your so. grandmother. So is, does Flixbus do travel for minors a little different than the airlines where you have to pay extra? And, uh, but, uh, but is there something to, um, uh, to help protect unescorted minors, say a 12 to 15 year old that's traveling? No, we, uh, you want to take yeah. it? Yeah. It's, um, we, we get a lot of um, feedback, and it's not only minors, it's also, also about, um, in, in Europe, very strong about elderly people who don't like the um, traveling experience you got in a plane or in, in Europe very much in a, in a train because it's, it's huge systems, it's chaotic, it's, you don't have someone to talk to, and I think the bus is a very strong um, offer to them because you got a driver. There's one person who's in charge of this, and it's a small group of people, and um, this is true for minors, this is true for elderly people, this is true for a lot of people who don't like the hassle of um, changeovers and traveling in, in big um, um, systems. Uh, so this is, on the one hand, a mass transportation system, but on the other hand, a very personal experience. And I think the fact of the driver is a very strong pro for that. You have one guy, and I have mm. my family at home that's very, um, a nice story, I want to tell it, it's just one minute. My, my mother has a friend and she's, she's 90. And she didn't travel for 25 years out of the small town she lives in because she don't like trains and planes, not to talk about train, uh, planes. So she didn't travel. And then we had Flixbus, it was coming to her town and my mother was booking the ticket online, gave her the ticket. She went to the driver and said, this is Miss Schumann. She goes to Dresden from Nuremberg. Please watch her tell her when there's Dresden, she's gonna be picked up by her nephew. And she started traveling again three, four times a year for Christmas to meet her nephew. And this is an amazing story which shows it's a, it's a system which is personal and nevertheless for a mass of people. And I think this is an advantage we bring with us. Uh, we have a question from the live stream. Um, the question is from Marcus Schuler of ARD asking, what is the reason that you haven't connected the Bay Area yet? We, we, we hope to connect the Bay Area very soon. Uh, California is, and we love that about California, it's a highly regulated market. When we first came here, everyone was asking us, why do you go to California? It's very regulated. We actually like regulations. We think it's a good thing. We come from highly regulated markets, and we are very happy to uh, abide by them. We are in discussion with the uh, California Public Utilities Commission, and we, we hope that we can have buses running uh, on the Sacramento to San Francisco, to San Jose, to uh, LA, to San Diego very soon. 
but we, we can't commit to a date yet because we, we just need to, to, to wait on this, uh, little, on, on, on this little answer. We already have some buses running and you can already buy tickets between LA and San Diego. So when the line is interstate, we can sell tickets and you actually can already travel in California, just not the Bay Area. That will be uh, the next event. Hi guys, just a quick question here. As far as um, hydrogen and fully electric buses, is that something that you guys will look toward in the future or mm -hmm. is that something you're already looking at? That's, that's a very good question and, and it comes a little bit, I would take a little broader answer because for me, mobility is, is currently so developing, so fast developments. You see it in every corner. There is new propulsion technologies, hybrid, and so on. It's, it's getting speed. And on the other hand, you have autonomous driving and so on. And I think it's an amazing time to be in a mobility business um, and to reshape mobility because it will look very, very different in 20 years from today. Um, and yes, new um, propulsion technologies is definitely something we are looking at. Um, at the moment, there is no bus offer, um, which is commercially in large scale available. Um, but we, were, we have been the first company um, in the world who has a long distance electric uh, bus running um, at the moment in France between Paris and Amiens. And we will have, have a second pilot project in Germany um, later this spring. Um, so yes, I see ourselves at the forefront to do this. And we are talking very closely to manufacturers and push them further to develop that because I, I see this is a changing environment and if there is a viable alternative, we're gonna be the ones doing it and we are only already the ones who are doing the pilot project so we, we set this trend here. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from the live chat. Uh, how do you plan to overcome some of the issues that Americans have with long distance buses currently? <laughs> First, That's a very broad uh, <laughs> question. Best service. America, it's kind of uh, at odds with transport because I'm coming from France, right? So uh, service in, say, in a French restaurant is terrible. But in, in the US, you, you have an amazing service culture and it's always personal and it's always friendly and it's always over the top except in transportation and uh, the, the first step to building this relationship between flexbus and the, and the american customer will be over service and this is why our partners are so important but also our drivers and the drivers are the ambassadors to flexbus and passengers will come the first time they will be lured by a nice stop and a flashy color but th then they will start coming again, 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 and this will be because the driver will be amazing. So d driver, out service everyone. Second, price. It still helps to have a low price and bus gets profitable very quickly so we can have a good price, we can outprice everyone. Third, comfort. Our buses are premium comfort, they are silent, you can relax, you can watch movies, you don't see the time passing. It's a very uh, nice place to be. It's it almost feels like being in your living room. I mean, actually, it's nicer than my living room, for instance. That's true. <laughs> then um, stops, availability, and inventory. So th there will be stops all over the place. There are already stops all over the place. You don't need to travel three hours to go like, to go, like when you go to the airport and you have to count in traffic. So there will be stops. And then the information will just flow in a very different way. So if your bus is late, and it happens, right? It's LA, we know that traffic sometimes uh, plays uh, those uh, games with you. If your bus is late, you will know it three, four, five hours before. So you can stay at home and do something else. You can chill uh, in your home and then you go to the station and you know that, that the bus will be there. So there's no stress about being at the station, waiting four, five, six hours and just having a terrible time. So don't believe that uh, people in uh, Europe love buses forever. We, we had the same relationship with bus. I think that when we grew up in, we are not like the first non-millennials in uh, still like uh, still active and you, no one was traveling by bus. No. It was something that was even less uh, widely consumed than in the US. It was a much smaller market in Europe and we made it, we managed to convince people in 28 countries 
And we are very optimistic that Americans will embrace it and welcome it even more than in any of our other markets. Hi, uh, Pierre. I have a couple of questions. This is for both of you, uh, Andre, too. Uh, first, did I understand you correctly? Initially, there won't be Wi-Fi, or will? Oh, there will be Wi-Fi. There will be. Ah. Okay, okay. And entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, would you tell people that, y in case anybody hasn't had you on their radar, like I have for about a month and a half, um, a little bit about how the fact that Flixbus exists is actually going to make Greyhound and Amtrak, in my belief that it will improve them, similar to what you happened with Deutsche Bahn? That's a very profound question. Um, actually, it's exactly what we have seen in, in all countries. Typically, in, in Europe, it's very much about regulation. So typically, trains are very protected from regulation. And it's a huge debate if long distance buses, and at the moment, it's simply Flixbus, so if Flixbus is allowed in a country. And there are big arguments about train, it's going to be going to suffer and it's, it's going to be terrible for us, so don't deregulate buses. What really happens is they have to adapt because it's, it's competition. And we are a child of competition. We like competition. We are super strong in competition. I believe that. And therefore, competition is, yes, it's also about price. That's true. It will be a very attractive price. But it's much more about the offer, so what you can bring on the street to the customer. It's about the quality, about the experience about the technology you got behind, and we're setting standards. And, and in Europe, I mean, Wi-Fi, we are talking about like, like it's granted. I mean, in Europe, we invented that, that you can have Wi-Fi on, on a inner transportation uh, vehicle. It was not in trains. It was not in planes. It was nowhere. We invented this. It was six years ago. It was a different time, yes. Um, but I mean, we did it. Everyone was laughing about us and said, who needs Wi-Fi? Who needs plugs in a bus? Come on, guys. And like after two or three years, the railway company said, ah, damn it, all these customers coming to us, even if they use the train, they say, come on, I, the bus ticket is half the price and I get Wi-Fi and a power plug. What are you doing with your trains? And now they were forced to do it, so the offer improved. And this is also true for like prices. This is also true for the offer in terms of volume and so on. So yes, I think us as a new way of transportation, we, we stimulate the whole transportation system. And I would prefer if competitors would not react and not get better and not strive for, for better service. But I usually have seen that sometimes it takes a while, but they always try. So we have another question from online. This is from James Mister. He asks, could you break down what your main demographics are, i.e. students, millennials, parents with kids, seniors? Uh, and maybe a breakdown of what you might expect as well in the US? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question, and, and we're going to split yeah. it between us. Um, I can tell you how it's um, in most of our markets. Um, typically, this is a, a product which is, and I, I said this at the beginning, should be accessible, affordable, and attractive for everyone. This is our aspiration. At the beginning, the truth is you have to get the people who easily try out things. So if we start a new line, it's going to be more the, the active travelers, the, in many cases it's students and it's young professionals who try something out and say, come on, I tried for this weekend. And this is why we also want to be very attractive um, in terms of price because we want an easy and a low barrier to entry for a lot of people. But what we see very quickly is that it's um, through word of mouth and, and also um, through advertising, something which gets more attractive to, to a broader group of people. And there are a second large group besides the young people is the elderly people who have no other valid mean of transportation in many cases. Maybe have a little more time and want to save some money but want to see their grandkids a little more often. So that's a typical classical um, second group. Um, and then you, over the time, get to the middle-aged people, professionals and so on. And there it's more occasion-based in terms of the younger, it's typically the major mean of transportation in many countries in Europe, um, and Flixbus has become this major mean of transportation. For the um, like more mid-age professionals, and I would not count myself in that, but I, to be <laughs> honest, I would have to count myself in that, I guess. Um, it's more on, it's not the only mean of transportation, but it's always a valid option, and I want to become this valid option for everyone. And for the US, I mean, you can yeah. say how it's, it's all. Um, uh, just, uh, you, you don't have a lot of money, or you have a lot of time. So you are young, 
a little bit older. And a couple of uh, more breakdowns, you have this thing among the younger generation in the US where they say now it's more about experiences and owning stuff and you don't want to settle and becoming mobile is better than being stable and becoming agile is better than even owning, like having access to things is better than, o than, o than owning them, which is also just a way of saying that it's a little bit harder and we try to make it okay by just having like at least good experiences because, because that's all, all that many people can afford. There is a huge load of student debt that's been thrown at the younger generation. So it will be even everything we saw in Europe will be the same in the US, but even stronger. So the, the students like to travel more than in Europe and they have less means to do so. The older people um, have a, a, as much time on their hands as in Europe, but they, they, they like to travel even more because families in the US are much more broken down in different cities, so they have a much bigger need for traveling. And distance, distances are longer, so uh, driving makes it harder. Just uh, one thing I wanted to focus a little bit more on, uh, Flixbus, and I think it says a lot about the quality of our service. Not saying that women are more discerning, but uh, more than 60% of our passengers are women. And um, from what we saw, because we actually started sales a couple of hours ago, the trend seems to be the same in the US. And um, it's, I, I, because it's been the case in all our countries, we think it's maybe the same in the US. And also, there will be, of course, because it's California, it's a great state of California, um, a great deal of our customers will also be our existing customers. Yeah. It's a lot about, mm. and, and this is two things we, we um, were surprised after we started is, um, how distributed the families and relationships have become also over the last couple of years. When I, when I was studying, there were not too many friends all over Europe and stuff like this. If I talk today mm. to, to in universities to students and also here in the US, I mean, you got friends everywhere. You got family everywhere. You're scattered across the whole country or the whole continent. Mm. Um, I think this is a very um, different development and also how um, active people are traveling and, and it has become much more international and long distance than we perceived it and this is totally true for the US. The, 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 on the one hand the need and on the other, other hand the willingness to, to see something has increased over the last couple of years. So I think we have one last question then from our live stream again. It's from Luca Zorloni from Wired. Uh, he asks, what are the targets of the first year of operations in the US? Uh, how many passengers are you expected to move? Yeah. Honestly, we are, we are a company which is usually um, very open about what we do as a service, what we, um, what we offer, what we have on customers. At the moment, in the US, it's very hard for us to tell. I mean, we are starting here and our ambition if we start in a market is always we want to change this market. We are not coming here for being another player in a market. We want to reinvent a market. We want to grow this market. We want to attract people to Flixbus, which have never thought of this mode of transportation. We want to reinvent this mode of transportation. Um, so looking at this year's, there's going to be, um, I think, two things we for sure can say. We're going to grow the initial offer significantly. It's already planned. It's already in preparation, and so this is our immediate step for this year. But to be honest, I mean, we are focusing on what's at, at hand. We have to make it successful, mm. what we have on the street now. This is our focus, and then we're gonna look what's coming later this year, what's coming next year. Our main priority is we have a network now on the street. It's on sale now, it's running in two weeks, and this is what we want to make successful with our partners, and after that, I think we are in the US, the limits are not existing, and this is, what we, what we see here. So, thanks to all of you. Thanks for all your interest and your questions. Um, we are ending the Q&As right now. You, everybody's got our press contact, so feel free to answer questions. If you have some requests about interviews, personal ones or face-to-face, -face, then just let us know. Um, so, thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get it started. Thank thanks you. Thanks a lot.